This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use the modularity features in Gephi. I've already loaded up a network, um, and you can see that I've done some filtering. So I've pulled out the nodes that aren't part of the giant component, um, and I've filtered out nodes that have a degree of 1. So we've really got the main active nodes here. I've also run the network diameter. That gives us some centrality measures. And before I get to the modularity, I like to apply some of those to the network. So I'm going to go up to ranking and rank by size and then choose betweenness centrality. And here I have a minimum and maximum size set. And when I apply that, it makes all the nodes a little bit bigger. And that's going to make it easier to see the coloring that comes out of the modularity. So when I go to modularity and click run, I get this window that comes up. Uh, we have randomize and use weights. I'm going to turn this off. There are weights in this graph, but I want you to see what it's going to look like just from uh, if we had a network with normal weights. Now by default the resolution is going to be 1. So I'll leave it at that, but the thing we're really going to explore in this video is how you can get different results by changing that resolution. So if we click OK and run that, it runs the modularity feature and you can see we come up with 29 communities. Now that's pretty high, but let's see what it actually looks like. So we can close this out and now we want to color code this graph based on the communities. To do that, we go up to Partition here. You have to click this Refresh button. And once we do that, we can pick Modularity Class. That's going to bring up a list of the communities. So if you remember, there were 29, and here we have a list of them. If you want to change the color for a community, so for example, here we have a whole bunch of different shades of green. Maybe I want to change this to be more orange. So I just click on it, and with my mouse held down, I can move over this palette to pick a new color. And when I let go, that's set. So if we look through, there aren't too many oranges in here. And maybe I'll make one more of these a darker color. OK, oftentimes you can just leave the default colors. But if you do want to change it, that's how you do it. And when you click Apply, now you see the colors spreading out in the graph. If we zoom in a little bit, we are starting to see some clusters. We have a, a pinkish group over to the right here. You can see some yellow in the middle, some green uh, off to the left. So if you look, we are starting to see some communities come out. We've got a pinkish group to the left of this main cluster in the middle. You can see some yellow in the center, some orange above that, and some green over to the right. Also, the groups out to the side, like the purple that we have here, there's some blue here and some orange up here, that's starting to come out. So that's great. But I think that this is a little bit cluttered. We've got a lot of groups going on here. So one thing that you might try doing is adjusting the modularity so you can reduce the number of groups. And oftentimes, that'll help clarify what you're seeing. So you do that by changing the resolution. And you can see it says lower will get you more communities, and higher than 1 will get fewer communities. So 5 often is a good setting uh, when you have a graph like this. So if we run this, now I have 13 communities instead of 29. But that doesn't update the color coding. I have to do that myself. Sometimes you can just click this Refresh button, but it doesn't always work. So what I think you should do is go back to Choose a Partition Parameter, then click Refresh, and then go back to Modularity Class. And now you see another group here where you only have the smaller number of 13 communities. If we apply that, now we see a much smaller number. It could be that our color coding is off where we're seeing uh, fewer groups. If we want, we can change individual communities or if you just go back and do the refresh like we did before, the color selections have changed. And if we reapply that, we see again we have a pretty consistent grouping. So now we have a big purple group off to the right, a kind of teal group in the middle, and an orange group off to the left. This may be too large for our groups. We may prefer something smaller. So we can experiment with other values. Say we try a 2.5. That gets us 22, which is kind of in between. And again, go back to choose a partition parameter, refresh, modularity class again, and apply. This one, we definitely have some colors that are too close. So I'm just going to refresh it again. 
And now we see we've got a few more of those clusters back. We still have a purple group, but now at the top we've got a green group. Um, we have another kind of tealish group off to the side. So we'd want to play with the colors here to get something that looks better, but this kind of partition seems to be working well. Just as a demonstration, if we made this number small, like 0.1, and ran it, we end up with 139 communities, which is really big. And if I refresh and go to modularity class, it's hard to even differentiate that many colors. And if I apply it, I really end up with this rainbow, which is kind of interesting looking, but it doesn't give us a lot of information on what's going on with the communities here. So when you're using modularity, one of the important things to think about is what number you should put in that resolution. Play around with different values, and then once you have something that works, you want to work on setting the color so you're really able to differentiate the groups. If we repeat this one more time with the value of 2.5, and we refresh this again, Let's actually do some tailoring of these colors. We have a lot that are in this purple-pink range here. So let's apply and see what we get. In the range here in the middle, we've got a lot of these purple nodes. We have green nodes down here and these teal ones off to the side. Let's differentiate those colors, um, and let's also go with the orange down here. We want to make those colors stand out a little bit more. So one thing that you can do is click on a node, and if you see that, it's highlighted all of its friends. And if we right-click on the node, we can do Select in Data Laboratory. That doesn't change anything in this window, but if we go to the Data Laboratory, our node selected, this last column here is Modularity Class, and we can see that that node is in Group 4. So we can take that information, go back to our Overview window, find Group 4 in the Modularity Class, and change that color. So let's make that a bright red. If we apply that, now that group really stands out. We're going to repeat that process, so we'll select one of these teal nodes. Here's one. Select it in the data laboratory. Go see that that's in group 20. Return to the overview. Find group 20, and let's pick, say, a bright yellow for that, and apply it. That's a little too light for our background, so Let's try Let's try a blue like that. Okay, so now that group is standing out. And we'll do one more with this green one. Select it in the data laboratory. Go check the modularity class, which is 2. Return to the overview. Here's group 2. And let's make that a much brighter green. Okay, so now our clusters are starting to stand out, and one thing that that selection just showed us is that we actually have a group right next to this that's also green, but slightly different. So let's select one of these green nodes that's slightly different. I'm going to repeat, select that in the data laboratory. We see that that's in group 7. So now let's go back to the overview and make group 7 appear in a color other than green. Group 7's up here, so let's make that a sort of purple color. But we want to make sure it's different from the red. So we'll get that kind of purplish pink. Now that has separated out this group here from the green, which helps, but we have a different purple group up at the top. So let's do one more tweak. This guy is in group 0. Let's make group 0 just for easiness will make it a kind of medium gray. And that group is separated. So now by tweaking these colors we've really been able to differentiate a lot of the groups. You can go through and tweak this as you see fit and that makes it much more clear to someone looking to see what those clusters are and how things separate. So there you go, a quick overview of modularity color coding in Gephi.